Around six months ago, I started migrating my Linux desktop from GNOME to KDE Plasma. Why? Because KDE is just quicker when it comes to implement new and anticipated features. It doesn't stutter in games the way GNOME does and is generally just more customizable and interesting to use, if you're into that. But hey, ever since I made the switch, you might have noticed from my customization video that it's just essentially a gnomified version of it. And that's not by accident, since I really like GNOME's multi-workspaces workflow, but also want my features like variable refresh rate support and tearing for lower latency gaming. So why am I back on GNOME then? Well, it's a long story. The starting point was that I wanted to take a look at GNOME 45, since I never had the opportunity to do so, and after playing a game of Apex Legends on it, I felt like the perceived input latency was lower. So for a couple of weeks I had both KD Plasma and GNOME installed and measured their latencies. Since I often need footage while editing a video, I usually use the desktop environment that is relevant in that moment, so I needed all my file shares, calendars and similar in both environments. And here's where it all began. Believe it or not, but I find GNOME way easier to use than Plasma. Let's take the overview for example. On GNOME it's being triggered by pressing the Windows or Meta key, or by moving your mouse into the top left corner. Very neat, but this can be mimicked in KD Plasma as well. Where the overview differs however is that you can better launch applications on GNOME than you can on Plasma, since you get access to a fully fledged menu and a dock at the bottom. But to be honest, that's not really a problem, since KDE Plasma can also launch applications, just without a proper menu. What's really annoying though is that you can't launch an application twice, as Plasma automatically selects the open window instead of a new instance. When having several windows on different desktops is part of your workflow, it's kind of annoying, as you need to launch the app, then the overview, then drag and drop it to the other screen, while it's just a drag and drop on GNOME. GNOME is just a tad more efficient here, but again, only if you're used to it. Another thing that I discovered was the GNOME virtual file system. You know, I always wondered, whenever you manually connect to a file share via the file manager, you got this special share icon. Whereas when mounting the share via an f-step entry, you would not, even when explicitly telling the system that it is a network share. The answer is the GNOME Virtual File System, short GVFS, which is basically the proper way how you mount file shares, since essentially everything happens in user space and you don't need any special permissions. The awesome thing about GVFS in contrast to the KDE input-output system is that it mounts the share in a way that you can access it via an actual local path. This is a requirement for applications that have their own file browser, as with KIO you don't have a path where you can access the share. You can however install and set up KIO Fuse, which does a similar thing like GVFS, but it's additional steps, or you just fall back to the, let's call it Linux native way of mounting shares. I generally prefer GVFS over the f-step method, since it stores credentials in the GNOME keyring, instead of relying on manual entries, a clear text credentials file, or jumping through a bunch of hoops to achieve the same thing. Oh, and speaking of the GNOME keyring, I wanna be a bit nitpicky here. Some applications actually demand it to stay logged in, like the Minecraft launcher for example. You know, okay, I usually rarely play Minecraft, but during Christmas and New Year, some friends and I played on the Jump and Run server, and logging in every time I opened the game became very annoying, especially when using 2FA. There are different launchers I could have used, and this issue is not KD Plasma's or GNOME's fault at all, but it was part of the reason on why I didn't use Plasma as often as I used to. All in all, with all the issues combined, GNOME is just more useful for me, and its silky smooth animations really give the desktop a high quality feel. But it's still not perfect. KD Plasma 6 has been released, and it fixes a lot of the things that used to make me like GNOME more. The new overview for example. Not only has it been completely revamped, you can now also switch between desktops more easily. When binding the overview cycle to the meta key for example, I get an overview like on GNOME and with a double press I get all my open workspaces. 
really neat. And the new overview also solves the main issue that I had with the Plasma 5 version, since you can now choose to not consider open windows when searching for an application. Yeah, there still is no application menu or dock, but I can work with that, since my workflow on GNOME is typically the same. And there is also one more thing about GNOME that kind of annoys me. I usually like my directory sorted in a compact list view. However, with the icon size that I would like to use, the thumbnails of images disappear. Why? I honestly have no idea, since in the file picker they work at essentially the same size. Dolphin, KDE's file manager, doesn't have this problem. And yeah, I could use it on GNOME, but come on. Have you ever tried Qt applications there? They look off in comparison to Libid Vita. And of course, there is the smoothness of games. Now, I play a lot less video games than I used to, but when I do, I want a silky smooth experience, and Plasma manages to hit that. No matter if the frame rate is unlimited or running below my refresh rate with VRR, it's incredibly smooth. But then again, GNOME 46 is getting experimental support as well, and also improved direct scan out, which used to interfere with some overlays, applications, or even extensions. At this moment, I actually cannot decide between one or the other. With GNOME, I get everything I need for my work an overview with an app menu to quickly manage my workspaces, online accounts with calendar and cloud access, and GVFS for mounting my network shares in a highly compatible way. On the other hand, there is KD Plasma, which has problems with the SMB shares by default, doesn't have such a nice overview, but is highly customizable and way better for gaming. So what I'm going to do is… wait. Before and even if I move back to my own modified Debian Linux, I'm going to try out both GNOME 46 and KD Plasma 6 on the new Fedora 40 once it releases. If GNOME actually manages to catch up to KD Plasma in terms of a smooth and stutter-free experience, then I might even stay on it. But if they don't or important extensions that I want to use break, then it's Plasma 6 for sure. But for now, I'm just gonna wait, do nothing and eagerly await the release of Fedora 40. And hey, the beta might actually launch next week. I'm really excited to get my hands on both these new desktop environments and can't wait to find out who's going to win this battle for me personally. It sure will be fun. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel and also leave a comment down below on what you think of this comparison. Did you experience similar difficulties? Maybe some things that bother me don't bother you. And all that's left to say now is… Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.